Welcome to the Healthy, Wealthy, and Smart Podcast. Each week, we interview the best and brightest in physical therapy, wellness, and entrepreneurship. We give you cutting-edge information you need to live your best life, healthy, wealthy, and smart. The information in this podcast is for entertainment purposes only and should not be used as personalized medical advice. And now, here's your host, Dr. Karen Litzy. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Karen Litzy, and today's episode is brought to you by NetHealth. And NetHealth wants to talk about something important, patients and their outcomes, specifically how great it is when your whole practice is rallied around a solid outcomes management program. How do you do that? How do you get that? Easy. You come to the Clinical Outcomes Summit. It is October 23rd to the 25th in Knoxville, Tennessee. It's hosted by Photo, but it's not just for photo clients. You'll hear success stories and case studies from your peers about leveraging outcomes data for deep patient engagement, thoughtful business practices, clinician education, optimizing revenue, and more. And last week, I said we had a big announcement concerning the Outcomes Summit, and here it is. There will also be motivating and inspiring keynote speakers including my good friend and mentor, Dr. Michelle Colley from Performance PT and Daniel Lord from Crossover Health. And of course, Healthy, Wealthy, and Smart podcast listeners get a steep discount. Use the discount code LITZY and the full summit pass is only $150. Go to www.outcomesnerd.com to register, learn more, and check out the agenda. So yay, keynote speakers. All right, on this week's episode, we're talking all about the importance of the therapeutic relationship. And I welcome on the program Dr. Tammy Strusel. She began with PhysioPro in 2018. She enjoys working with patients after all types of injuries and surgeries. She's an assistant professor in the Doctor of Physical Therapy program at the University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Campus, has been awarded a bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees in physical therapy. Clinically, she has been recognized since 2003 as an orthopedic clinical specialist through the APTA, and she is a certified manual therapist through the University of St. Augustine. She is the past recipient of the American Physical Therapy Association Colorado Chapter Physical Therapist of the Year, teaches, researches in the area of clinical reasoning, orthopedic physical therapy practice, and practice management. She is a member and past president of the Colorado State Physical Therapy Board through the Colorado Department of Regulatory Agencies. Joining us is also one of her former patients, Colleen Rapp. So she talks about the life-changing experience with physical therapy and how it inspires patients to give back. She has worked as a journeyman and press operator at the Denver Post for more than 30 years. Colleen noted how very proud she is to be a working woman in a man's world where the work is difficult but rewarding. Decades of physically demanding work plagued her with back and shoulder injuries, as well as significant chronic pain, ultimately requiring surgery. She turned to physical therapist Dr. Tammy in 2014, and this is what we're talking about. This whole kind of episode is about... Colleen's experience about their relationship, how important it was, and how it helped Tammy, or how Tammy helped Colleen not just get past her injuries, but create a whole new lifestyle. So it's really, really exciting. And Colleen is not only motivated to improve herself and her quality of life, but ensuring the availability of funds to help the next generation of physical therapists. CU Program Director Margaret Schenkman, who I actually met, has led the charge behind student scholarships since the inception of the CUPT Scholarship and Endowment Board in 2012. And so Colleen is helping to raise money for that scholarship so more students can join the physical therapy program. She talks about an upcoming concert in Colorado, we in Denver. We will have the link to this concert in the show notes over at podcast.healthywealthysmart.com, and we talk all about it in this episode. So everyone, enjoy. Hi, Tammy and Colleen. Welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited to have both of you on. As I said before we went on the air, this is the first time I've had a physical therapist and a patient on at the same time, so I'm excited for the listeners to learn from both of you. So welcome. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. All right, so Colleen, let's start with you. So uh, what 
Why did you seek out a physical therapist? Well, I was um, working and I hurt my back. And I went to a doctor and basically he had me to go to physical therapy, which I had gone before maybe like um, a couple weeks. So I wasn't really familiar with physical therapy, but I had hurt my back really bad. So I knew it was going to be a long road and I was kind of nervous at first. And so he recommended to me, me to go to low high physical therapy. And that's where I met Tammy. And did you... So I know you said you didn't know a lot about physical therapy, but once you were referred to physical therapy, did you look anything up? Did you have any expectations? Um, I really didn't have many expectations because um, working with a lot of people that have gotten hurt in my job, I'm a pressman at the Denver Post. It wasn't uh, a very good uh, report from the people because they just didn't get a lot out of it. So it was kind of like, oh, I'm going to physical therapy, what a drag. And that's kind of what I was looking at. So I didn't really know a lot about it. So I just kind of walked in there and, and had to go, basically. Okay. And so, Tammy, let's talk about kind of that first visit. Did you know any of this before Colleen came in to see you? Or did she say, oh, I'm just here because the doctor told me to? Well, this particular clinic um, sees a fair number of people who are press operators at the Denver Post where, uh, where Colleen works. And um, so I had seen, you know, a few people here and there. Um, and I, so I knew a little bit about the job. I knew it was a pretty physical job, that they had a fairly high um, injury rate. Um, and yeah, so I, you know, I, I evaluated her and, uh, you know, found out that she had had um, a long, uh, history of being very, um, healthy in her job until, um, she hurt her back and, um, that she was, you know, she was in a lot of pain and, um, having a really hard time, uh, getting back to work. And so that's where we started. And can you, so we'll kind of look at this as, as like a mini case study right now, right? So Colleen came in as the physical, she comes in with low back pain injured at work. Colleen, were you unable to work at the time? Yes, I was taken okay. off work. I could barely um, walk, so I was okay. like, taken off work. I couldn't even go down um, to modified duty. I was at home. Okay, so Tammy, kind of walk us through your evaluation, meaning when she came in, what kind of questions did you ask for the subjective, and then what did you look at for the objective part of the eval? Well, this was a few years ago, so uh, coming up with the exact details. Yeah. It doesn't have to be exact. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I found out that she um, that she had, uh, like, like I said, she'd had a long history of, of uh, working in a very physical job, uh, and the vast majority of people that do the job are, are uh, men, and that she had been very successful um, and... Uh, and really loved her job and, and um, worked hard at it and was very proud of it. And I think she's still very proud of it. Um, and, uh, you know, I think I asked probably fairly typical questions about the mechanism of injury, how she um, was injured and, and uh, you know, what, what kinds of, you know, what kinds of things she was not able to do and what kinds of things she could still do. And, um, and then did a, a full, lumbar and um, hip examination, which I always do, um, you know, kind of head to toe, but focused on those areas. Mm -hmm. And after, after that evaluation, Colleen, what did you feel after that first visit? When you left, did you feel like, oh, I think I'm in good hands here? Or were you like, oh, maybe this might work, but I'm not sure? Oh, no, I definitely at the very first knew I was in good hands um, with the way Tammy treated me when I came in. I think she knew I was a little nervous. And so she kind of, you know, kind of joked with me and she kind of like explained things to me and, and then she examined me. But through the examination, it was very comfortable. So I was like, oh, OK, this isn't so bad. You know, I, you know, you have to feel comfortable at first and and get that rapport and then you're just not like shaking going oh my gosh where am I at and so I think after like 20 minutes of that and just talking to her because the first session was an hour mm -hmm. and 
and after her examination, she she sat with me for about like ten minutes and explained everything to me about um, not exactly what was wrong with me because she doesn't really believe in that. She believes in you know the fact that I need you know to listen and not concentrate on that. So she kind of just explained to me about um, that we were going to work together and I was going to see her twice a week and that we were just going to get me better and get me stronger and made me feel really comfortable. And that was the first step of like, just being a good experience. And, you know, before we went on the air, we sort of talked about this therapy, the idea of a therapeutic relationship. And I think Colleen, you just really described a really for great first step in achieving a therapeutic relationship. So Tammy, what, did you have a sense when Colleen left that A, she was going to be coming back and B, she was probably going to be pretty invested in this? I mean, I guess there's always a possibility that you don't connect with people and that mm -hmm. they, you know, that they choose not to come back. But I didn't, I didn't get that sense from her. I, I think um, from the very beginning, she was, she was very interested in, and, um, I think because she does like her job a lot and um, really wanted to to get back to it, um, I I think you know just in general she was she was invested and uh, um, you know I, I think one of the things she talked about is um, that I'm I I don't want to I think she wanted as most people do to know the thing that was wrong with her back um, and I'm pretty averse to the you know, uh, biopsycho or the biological, um, mm -hmm. approach to, you know, bringing out the model and explaining all the anatomy and everything, because, um, I've, I've been doing this now for 28 years. So, uh, I used to do a lot of that. Um, and I realize now that that's just not healthy. And she, she actually, you know, she embraced that. Um, and she already, you know, said that cl that clearly is kind of a core principle for me that, uh, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, um, you know, get that model out and say, here's the thing that's wrong with your back. And, um, you know, unfortunately, sometimes, um, you know, depending on who she's talked to, whether that's coworkers or that's the nurse at work, or that's one of the work, um, workers comp physicians or something like that. I think she got a little bit of that. And I tried to um, divert away from that mindset and uh, she's really been very receptive she doesn't ask me very much anymore you know, <laughs> exactly what you know about my disc or about my you know I mean we talk a little bit about your SI joint but uh, we try not to focus too much on that right and so Colleen from a patient standpoint what uh, Tammy was saying is just for for your clarity so a lot in the physical therapy world, we used to rely on this sort of biomedical model where, you know, there is an issue with the tissue, A plus B equals C. So this hurts and this tissue is quote unquote damaged. This is why you have pain. Now pain we know is much more complex and we use what's called a biopsychosocial model of care, which is, yes, there is bio, the bio part is still in there. But we also want to take into consideration that there are psychological aspects to pain uh, and social aspects to pain. So, Colleen, my question for you is, were you able, did you feel like not focusing solely on the biomedical part of it or just on the tissue part of it was helpful for you in your recovery? Yes, because it made me realize that I needed to just work and, and get better instead of like, oh, this is what happened to me. This is what I have. And get and if I knew, I think I probably would have been scared, you know, or like, oh, poor me or this or that. And I didn't want to get into that, that viewpoint. I wanted to kind of just say, okay, all right, I got somebody that just basically let's do this. Let's get work. Let's get me back to work. Let's I'll work with you. You work with me. I'll teach you things and um, do the best for me. And I needed to listen and I needed to do those things. And that attitude gave me the, the will to do that and not focus on the other stuff. And that helped. It, it really did. You can't, if you, if you get your mind 
focusing on um, what is wrong is it, it doesn't really help. You got to kind of move on and, and try to do the things you need to do to get better. Yeah, I think that's great advice for anyone. Instead of dwelling on what's wrong, let's start dwelling on what's right and what you can do to improve your function and, and to improve your life. Two very, very different ways of looking at things. And from a patient standpoint, I think that's great to hear. Now, Tammy, you were saying before we went on that, okay, the back thing was a couple of years ago, but then there were also some other things. So <laughs> Colleen's a bit of a repeat offender, no offense, Colleen. But again, I think that shows the strength of the relationship. Now, I don't know what the laws are in Colorado, but do you have direct access there? Yeah, we have 100% direct access. Ugh, lucky. So, um, Colleen, when you were injured, let's say subsequently after the back, you had gone to see Tammy for other things. Did you know just to go straight to her or do you still have to go through a system? Um, when I went to hurt my shoulder, I basically asked my doctor if I could see her. And I told my doctor that I was comfortable with her and the success that I had with her with my serious back injury and that I really felt comfortable with her and he was okay with that. Can I say a little bit of yes. something else there? You know, these were work-related injuries. So mm -hmm. there is a, there's always going to be a, um, a, a, a claims process and a physician that um, now I, I've actually to kind of take a little bit of a step back after we finished treatment related to her back, we did um, do some training sessions um, to really get her beyond, you know, kind of basic back to work and those kind of things and um, work a lot on fitness um, and exercise and, and those kinds of things, which was fa fairly new for her. I mean, not that she didn't exercise before, but I think she's, she can probably talk about like what her fitness routine was like for <laughs> Yeah, my non-fitness routine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so I think the, the most important thing that we're, we're hitting here, and I have to kind of comment on what you said, Karen, is um, for 33 years I worked at the Post and I never really had an injury and like little things until like five years ago when I hurt my back. And then it just seemed like um, the last few years with the, you know, staff decrease and everything we might work a little bit harder or, or faster and stuff and I think things um, have gotten a little bit to where I had had like three injuries and and so that's really cool because Tammy's actually um, working with her has reminded me to always make sure that I or work smarter than harder and got me back to where no matter what my position in, in my work or my life or anything, I always have to be smart and I always have to take care of myself first and, and, you know, be careful what I do and think about what I do. So I just wanted to comment on that because, because the job I do is very dangerous and it, it is really scary. And, and this whole PT thing is really important because it did change everything that I do at my job and it has made it so much safer for me. So, Colleen, I'm going to ask out of pure ignorance here. What okay. <laughs> exactly? What exactly does your job entail? Um, I actually work on a five-story press. Okay, um, like what is that? It's a. Newspaper <laughs> I'm sorry. <press>. I... <laughs> and so, have you ever seen like um, on TV where the paper's coming on a conveyor? And oh a yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what I work on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Except they're more. Um, um, like life they're a little bit more fancier but they're a little bit um, bigger now they're about five stories high um, they're really long I'm really not sure how long they are but it's uh, I do like 600 steps a day I lift 50 pounds I push uh, 1500 pound rolls I do a lot of climbing I do a lot of uh, everything it's it's eight hours 10 hours sometimes 12 hours of just physical work Okay. Wow. So that's a lot. So now, Tammy, as Colleen is coming to you for various injuries, you obviously have this in mind. So my question for you, and this might be some good advice for other physical therapists who might be listening, is how did you take into account her 
job and the requirements of her job when it came to prescription exercise prescription and things like that and then and now i understand why you moved on to the fitness part of things because you know you hear a lot like well insurance cut me off so all we could do are just these little exercises or uh, I only saw the patient for six weeks when in reality, we know they need a lot more to keep to stay healthy and to not re-injure themselves. So what advice would you have for therapists who need to take into account the person's very physical job? Yeah, so I, I think there, there's probably two components of that. So so one is definitely um, the work itself. And, um, you know, if I was having her do basic, you know, transverse abdominis contractions and, and those kind of things, she, there, there was just never going to be, um, you know, to, to a point where she was able to, you know, get strong enough to, to actually physically do her job before. And I knew she was able to do it before, so she would be able to. Um, so there was, there was definitely, I, I, I believe, and Colleen could, <laughs> could tell you this, I believe in hard exercise. Um, you know, I think sometimes we don't push people enough and, um, and some of it does have to do with, there's times where we have a very short, you know, we see somebody for three weeks and you know, how much can you do from a fitness standpoint? But we were lucky we got to see, um, Colleen, I got to see Colleen for longer. And so I, I, I had her work hard. Um, as far as kind of general um, exercise and fitness and getting stronger. Um, but I, it, there was a time in my career where I would go out and visit the patient and, and see what their job was. And, um, and that, those days are mostly gone. It, honestly, we get video, um, you know, off of people's phones. And so I had a pretty good idea of what the work was, but um, several times Colleen's uh, brought in, I, you know, we've, we've talked about it and she's brought in video of, you know, the types of work that she um, needs to do. And, and then we would go, go through things like, you know, so what of your job duties do you think is the hardest or most uh, trickiest? Because she would have to get into like, you know, awkward positions or um, I think I remember trying to work with her on like her, what her foot position was or something. She's like, you realize I'm standing on this little bitty platform that I can't really move off of. And I was like, oh, well, maybe we need to re rethink that. So I don't know if Colleen, you want to talk more about that. But. <laughs> yeah, there's sometimes where like, I'm standing on a platform and there's like a drop on either side of me and I have to reach up and lift a, probably about a 45 pound piece of press. It's called a bar and turn it around and um, position it in a different way without falling. And it's really crazy because on this uh, piece of the press, there's an air connection to it. So once you take it off where it goes, it pulls you back. And so you have to be pretty strong and you have to be pretty smart or, or you know, you're in trouble. <laughs> you yeah. could drop, break your toe or something. So I think we worked on that. And that was the most important thing that I think where we're on the subject is the greatest thing about Tammy was is that she saw that I needed to stay strong. When you injure yourself, I think that you have to learn that it's not over as soon as you walk out of therapy. You have to stay strong and you have to keep on doing your job and you have to, to do the things that are going to make you able to do that and not keep getting hurt. So with us keep working together, I learned all kinds of stuff. I, I learned how to, you know, just talking with her, she would say, well, can't you move the press down a little bit so you're not, your arms aren't up so high? Or can you just position yourself? Or can you not twist? And um, it just all made sense to me. And I always say that you can walk up some stairs and you can walk really fast, just for example. But if you walk up the stairs right, sounds weird but if you walk them upright you can do a whole bunch of them and you're not hurting yourself but if you don't do things right the repetition just wears on you wears on you wears on you so in my period of time with Tammy and learning all these things and doing the things that um, I needed to learn just totally was life-changing for me that's amazing Tammy what a great job and if I can go back to kind of just reiterate what you had said before so when 
you're working with someone who maybe has a complicated job situation. Not everyone sits at a desk for, you know, eight to 10 <laughs> hours a day. Not everyone does that. No. So I love the advice of asking the patient to take video of what they need to do. And then the question that you ask, well, what are the, what are the things that, you know, are most problematic for you? What are the things, what are the trickiest things you need to do at your job? Because if you can get the things that are the hardest things to do, I would imagine that working on those and getting some confidence and to be able to do those really difficult parts of the job, then you can get down to like some of the easier work after. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, and some things are not modifiable. I mean, when mm -hmm. you're working on a large uh, piece of equipment, but what I found with Colleen is she was so familiar with the job and what she had to do that, you know, both we could work together to find alternative ways or alternative positions. I'm like, is there any way you could step up or, you know, do something so that you're not reaching so high or, you know, whatever. And, and many times she was like, oh, actually, I've never really thought about doing it that way. I'll try. And um, often she was successful uh, with that. And the other aspect was that she had such seniority that she is able to, she has such seniority that she's able to uh, bid on um, shifts that are a little bit healthier for her in general now. Um, and um, you know, we can talk about things like sleep and uh, diet and stress reduction and weight loss and all these things are, are um, a result of her really embracing the idea of, of um, you know, she wanted to continue to work. She knew that she wasn't probably going to be able to if she didn't, um, you know, uh, really change her lifestyle. And uh, to her credit, she absolutely did. And, and um, you know, she's, she, I, I, I repeatedly tell her she's the one that put in the hard work and um, you know, cause I can do all of these same things with somebody else. And if they don't take it seriously and they don't really embrace it, then it, it doesn't matter. So. Right. Right. And so, so, Oh, go ahead, Colleen. Sorry. Yeah. Great. Great point, Tammy. I think that that's the greatest thing about this is Tammy taught me, you know, that it's just not the exercise. It's eating well, it's nutrition, losing weight, sleeping good, using your environment. I was hiking today and I was thinking about, you know, about what the most important thing about, you know, physical therapy and everything was. And I always think that some people that are really working out and stuff, they have to use weights and they have to do things and they think they're so strong and they still do things wrong. And I was hiking and I was like, I use my environment to make myself better every day because of Tammy's care. The way I walk, the way I walk, you know, hike, the way I at work, the way I move and the way I eat, the way I sleep, the way I think, because actually, uh, injuries and especially a couple injuries you know I just got out of one injury and got hurt again and that was totally mentally hard on me and I all this connects to the patient and that's what a patient goes through so when you can correlate all this in your life as a whole body as like Tammy teaches it's it's amazing it is I truly believe that physical therapy is the most important thing between the point of injury and health. And if you keep on going, I'm going to be walking when I'm 62 and I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of things. And, and it has just changed my life. Hopefully beyond when you're 62. Yeah, probably. Yeah, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> I have to pick a point. <laughs> Eight high. Nine Eight high. high. Okay. So 92. Yeah, How about 92? 92. 92. 92. Exactly. 92. <laughs> well, you know, and I think this is such a great example, Tammy, of being a physical therapist, treating at the top of your license, and really, in, really incorporating lifestyle change into your practice. You know, it sounds to me like you're more than I see someone for about a therapy, they're discharged. See ya. Versus giving them a lot of skills and tools to not just take care of that bum knee or the painful shoulder or low back pain, but rather let's look at this person as a whole. Let's take a holistic view of this person. So, 
you you know you said you've been uh practicing for 28 years i've been practicing for like 20 so i can certainly attest that my views have completely changed from when i first started so i'm not going to assume that yours have or haven't <laughs> but <laughs> if they have changed where was it in your career where you feel like you had a major shift like I can say, I know exactly when I had sort of this major shift in treatment paradigm. Did you have that major shift or was it just as more research came out, you just started incorporating all of this or were you doing it from the beginning? And on that note, we're going to take a quick break to hear from our sponsor, NetHealth, and we'll be right back with that answer. Let's talk about something important patients and their outcomes. If you love to nerd out on this kind of talk like I do, the best industry event around outcomes management is happening from October 23rd to the 25th, and it's the Clinical Outcomes Summit. It's hosted by Photo, but it's not just for photo clients. It's a gathering of everyone who believes in the power of outcomes management to drive change for patients, clinicians, practices, and payers. And the best part, healthy, wealthy, and smart podcast listeners get a steep discount on the registration. The full summit pass is only $150. At that rate, go ahead and bring your entire team. Go to www.outcomesnerd.com and use the discount code LITZY. That's L-I-T-Z-Y. Hope to see you there. I, I would say that I don't know that I had a, a shift. Um, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to, to teach at the University of Colorado, and um, so I'm around really smart people all the time, and that, that help, I, I don't want to minimize how that is so important. Um, including people that practice in all different areas. And so I've learned a lot from, um, you know, from our neuro folks, from our cardiopalm folks, from other, you know, musculoskeletal people. Um, uh, and I, I guess, you know, there was a shift at some point, and I don't even remember, I think I might've gone to a course where the emphasis is like, you know, your, your orthopedic people have neurological systems. Um, and, and it really, it, I, I would say that's probably if I had to have a, a uh, point of shift, mm -hmm. that was like, oh, of course, you know, if I'm not addressing that, then, um, you know, then I'm, I'm, I'm missing the boat. And that was a while ago, but um, I would say from a language standpoint, um, you know, therapeutic neuroscience education and motivational interviewing and some of the things that, you know, I think probably took the first of those about maybe four or five years ago. So. Um, I was, I was never a big, well, I can't say never, but I, I think I, I figured out that, you know, just pulling out the spine model and scaring people to death, uh, <laughs> was probably not a good idea a long, a long time ago. But I do think that, that, um, you know, I think we all have learned that probably some of the language, um, that we use is not helpful. Um, so I don't know, I, I don't know if I had a, I, an aha moment or it's just, I think I've always been very open. Um, and I, from my first outpatient job, I remember I, I did inpatient for a couple of years and then, um, I worked at a clinic where the people had continuing education lists that were just enormous and that had a big in, impact on me. I, I specifically remember thinking, you know, wow, these people really are invested in, in, in learning and, um, and learning from each other, uh, as well. And. And uh, so I've always, I think that was instilled in me very, very uh, early in my career. And that's continued with me. I have a pretty long continuing education list because I, I have, you know, been able to glean something from every single thing that I, that I've gone to. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. And Colleen, as the patient, do you get a sense of that, this sort of lifelong learner in Tammy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think Tammy inspires me. I mean, I, I kind of look at her like, who else could you be in your profession? I mean, you teach, you practice, you govern, you everything, you know? I mean, it's so inspirational. I, I have to tell you one thing that um, she did for me that was kind of relative for this. Not only did she teach me about my health and help me through my things, I'm kind of like, I'm in a world with a press room, so I'm not like very, I'm educated. I'm smart, but I'm smart in the things that I know. And 
she had me take um, introduce me to classes online where I could learn about anatomy, and so I took them, and it was amazing. It 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 just she taught me how to be a better person in a whole bunch of ways, and and being able to go into a doctor's office and and know what my my quads were and my <laughs> my my you know and kind of explain things a little bit more and understand what we were doing and what was firing and and actually all all the way around it's it's just really incredible so yeah i think very highly of her i think that she um totally is a true um inspiration and a gift to her her profession sounds that way to me that's for sure and it also sounds that you know from from the patient standpoint and i think this is so important and it's something that we hear so much about is that through education she was able to empower you to take control of your own health you were partners in your care versus her just telling you what to do and you did it without knowing why or what behind it and and like you said really inspired you to reach for more and if every physical therapist can do that with every patient then I think that it would be such a boon to the profession. Oh, definitely. It would, it would kind of, yeah. I mean, you guys, you guys are really important and you guys change lives, but you know, it's hard because not everybody's susceptible to that. So, but in this story, um, I was, and and it's changed me. I've lost like, I, I think, Kimmy, what, like 35, 40 pounds. And I exercise like, yeah, <laughs> like three or four times a week. And I, I'm just uh, overall a better person. And, and it's, it's just a wonderful thing. I'm very, in, yeah, as you know, I, I just, it, it's, it's me. It's my, uh, what do you call it? It's just, it's in me now and, and it's not just physical therapy, it's life. It brought life back in me. I can say it that way. Right. And I, I think, you know, you, you already heard, you already said, well, um, you know, I was hiking today and, you know, I mean, we're, we're fortunate enough to live in one of the most beautiful places on earth. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and Colleen, you know, has taken full advantage of that. You know, I think there was a time where she would come home and, and you know from work and she was tired and she wouldn't do a whole lot and now she's really you know she's really uh drank the kool-aid of of uh being an active person um i think she exercises but she's also just a more active person in general and 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 thinks about activity and exercise differently and and uh, like i said she really you know embraced that and embraced making some um lifestyle changes that has made all the difference for her. Yeah, and you know, before we kind of wrap things up here, I just have uh, one more question for each of you. They're gonna be slightly different, but um, Colleen, I'll start with you, and you've kind of, I think, might have already answered this question sort of throughout, but as a patient, how has physical therapy changed your life? And part two of that, what advice would you give to someone who's on the fence about physical therapy? Um, I think physical therapy changed my life because I learned that the most important thing is um, mobility and stability. And so movement, sorry about that. And so I think I, I was always thought that to be a strong person i had to go out and you know get a trainer and do 50 push-ups and 30 squats and walk home couldn't breathe you know and what i learned through physical therapy is is that the exercises that you get are are really important to learn how to balance to, to the simplest things can can impact you in a certain way and the other thing is is that I had to embrace it because if I embraced it and learned how to do the things Tammy taught me, not, not only the exercises, but if my leg hurt and how to tape my leg or, or ice it or something, I could achieve to be better and to stay better and not be a person that was going to a year from now say, oh, my shoulder still hurts or my back still hurts. And that's what I work every day for is, Finally, instead of 
you know, I finally found something that like physical therapy that just had an impact to me. And it's very important. It's very important. If you do those things, you'll be successful. And that's the way I believe. I think that to tell somebody is to give it a chance because I work with so many people that don't. They mm -hmm. automatically say, I want to have surgery. I don't want to go to physical therapy. And, and I think you get into that stuff where they just assume that it's a waste of time. But I think if you would just give it a chance and just see and, and give it, you know, give it a try and listen, I think you'll, you'll learn that it's just going to change your life like it did mine. Incredible. And Tammy, this is a question that I ask a lot of my physical therapy colleagues that come on the program, and that's, given what you know now, where you are in your life and your career, what advice would you give to yourself as a new grad right out of PT school? Wow, that seems like a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I think... Um, it might be similar, and actually, I give this advice to my new my new grads that I teach, um, and that is that first of all, that your first job or two is so formative, um, and so select wisely. You know, look for places where you have a sense that the culture is good, that there is a lifelong learning mindset. Um, you know, things like, you know, if, I, if I'm if i gone, I want to be sure that my, that patients that have come to see me, and if I'm on vacation for a week, that they can go to somebody else, and I know that they're going to get really good care. So, um, yeah, and then just that lifelong uh, learning for yourself. You know, if you, if you get stagnant and, um, you know, kind of bored, um, maybe you need to kind of figure out what – what you might be able to do to kind of spark that again. Um, and, uh, you know, for me, you know, there was a time where I, I decided that I, I wanted to pursue teaching and I was, um, you know, I really sought out that opportunity and, and, uh, you know, that's been extremely enriching, uh, for me as well. So I'm, I'm really fortunate there, but I also don't want to, you know, teach and not treat patients. Um, as long as my body can uh, mm -hmm. hold up, I want to. I want to keep doing that because I. I. I think it. It. Uh, it gives me all kinds of great stories uh, for uh, class and. Uh, and it's also um, fun. I. I think I was born to be a physical therapist. So um, I, I know I made the right choice uh, a long time ago, and uh, it still is. Um, is really a terrific profession. Amazing. And Colleen, you have, can you tell us a little bit more about your student scholarship fund and what you have coming up? Um, well, Tammy changed my life so much that I wanted to do something in return. And so I found out the scholarship fund at her school didn't get a lot of funding. So I worked like a year and sold um, sports memorabilia and I basically sold concert tickets and all kinds of stuff. And I put all the proceeds for a year into the fund. And so the year was up and I kind of wanted to do something. I was like, well, this was really good. I want to do something like really crazy fun, you know, go out with a, you know, happy, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I decided to um, arrange a concert on September 5th and it's going to have a pretty uh, good artist in Denver. Her name is Hazel Miller and all the proceeds will go to the scholarship fund. They will be do donated. So I'm kind of excited about it. That's incredible and what a great way to kind of pay it forward. And the, just to be clear, this is a scholarship fund at the University of Colorado. Yep, at University the of Colorado, uh, Doctor of Physical Therapy, um, specific student scholarship fund. Awesome. Well, I mean, Colleen, what a great way to give back to the profession and to the future of the profession. So, and I'm sure those at the University of Colorado are very thankful for um, all of your help and, and enthusiasm in getting the word out about physical therapy. I know I am. Um, so, Colleen, thank you for coming on and sharing your story. Thank you, Karen. It's been a really nice to meet you. Yes, and Tammy, thank you for coming on and sharing 
your story and the way that you've worked with Colleen. And I think that you're giving a lot of therapists, especially newer grads or students, a nice glimpse into really how we can move beyond just take an injury and rehab it to take an injury and change a lifestyle. Yeah, thank you so much, Karen. I, I think, uh, you know, that's what, um, you know, practicing at the top of your license, as you said before, you know, that's, that's uh, where um, you can really feel good every day uh, about inspiring people and um, getting people to make lifestyle changes like Colleen made um, so that they can be a, a, a better, stronger, a more resilient person. Um, that's what it's all about. Amazing. Well, thank you both ladies for coming on to the podcast today and to everyone listening. Thank you so much. Have a great couple of days and stay healthy, wealthy, and smart. A huge thank you to Tammy and Colleen for coming on and really letting us get a sneak peek into their therapeutic relationship and really how instrumental it was in Colleen's recovery and continued lifestyle changes. And of course, thank you to Net Health for sponsoring today's podcast. And again, the Clinical Outcomes Summit, which is hosted by Photo, is October 23rd to the 25th in Knoxville, Tennessee. And it's specifically talking about how great it is when your whole practice is rallied around a solid outcomes management program. Aside from having the power to influence better patient results, you have the right data to assess clinic performance oversee quality, assess and mentor clinicians, understand patient sentiment, and market to referring physicians. And they've got new keynote speakers just announced, Dr. Michelle Colley from Performance PT and Daniel Lord from Crossover Health. Healthy, wealthy, and smart podcast listeners get a steep discount. It's only $150. Use the discount code LITZY. Go to www.outcomesnerd.com. Thank you for listening and please subscribe to the podcast at podcast.healthywealthysmart.com. And don't forget to follow us on social media.